Hiya, babe. Say, how about a little... Ouch! Does that answer your question, buddy? The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. You all remember Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's famous Maisie pictures. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen, Anne Southern. But first, your announcer. Here's Ann Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the fellow said, Maisie Revere. I'm a gal that knows most of the answers because, believe me, I've been asked most of the questions. That's why maybe when I met Eddie Jordan, I knew it was the real thing. Eddie and me, we've been engaged a long time now, but we can't get married because Eddie's income ain't been coming in steady enough. But now he's got a good job in a bank. In the interest adding up department. <laughs> right now I've dropped in on the bank to see how he's getting on. And also, since it's my birthday next week, I'd better start dropping hints about a present. Because with Eddie, you gotta get to work early. Uh, 68 times 10 is 680. 9 into 34 doesn't go. Well, try again, Eddie. Maybe it can. Maybe it can. Maisie! <laughs> Hello, darling. Don't mind me. Just go ahead with your work. I'll just watch. Sure, honey, but the boss, Mr. Gillespie, doesn't approve of we clerks working to an audience. I'll see you tonight. <clears throat> Nine into thirty-four is... Eddie, three, I, I just dropped over to tell you you don't really have to. Three, uh... Don't have to what? Well, just because it's only seven days to my birthday, you don't have to spend your hard-earned money just to buy me a present. I know I don't have to. Nine but if you're going to be a pig-headed deer and insist on getting me something, I guess there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, your hands sure are tied. <laughs> uh, now, honey, I've got a lot of work to do, and you can be a big help. Oh, you mean like giving me a hint about what I want you should get me? Okay, okay, what do you want? Well, it's, uh, it's pretty hard to think at 10 o'clock in the morning. Maisie, it's 11 o'clock. It is? Well, how can I tell? I don't have a watch. Uh, uh, honey, I know it makes no difference what I get you, but, well, I had another idea for a birthday present for you. Very expensive. Oh, Eddie Jordan, don't you dare tell me what it is. I won't. Nine and After three, all, four. I'll just wait till my birthday. Seven long, endless days to find out. Good. Nine and three. Because by that time, it may be too late to exchange it. Maisie, I don't think you'll want to exchange this gift. And you'll never guess what it is. Well, I won't even try to guess. I know I'll love it, whether it's handkerchiefs, gloves, perfume. Sixteen and nineteen or thirty-five. Plus or even a handbag? Six. Thirty-five. Pajamas? Six. Bathrobe? Uh, look, Maisie, let's stop playing twenty questions. It's, uh... It's what, Eddie? It's eleven o'clock, and I still haven't got my work done. Oh. Oh, you're right, sweetie. You should get back to work. Yes. I've got some shopping to do anyway. i got to buy an anniversary present for you. Anniversary present? Yep. Today's exactly a month you've been working here. And when you hold on to a job that long, it calls for a celebration. See you later for lunch. <laughs> And you really think my fiancé, Mr. Gillespie, would like this girl's cigarette case as a gift, Clark? Oh, he should, Miss Cavendish. It's positively dreamy. I don't know. After all, Mr. Gillespie has very expensive taste. He's a bank president, you know. Yes, I know. But he just adore this cigarette case, Miss Cavendish. It's the most expensive one we carry. Mm -hmm. Well, then I think I'll buy it. Uh, put it on Mr. Gillespie's charge account, will you? Well, I shall take care of it immediately, Miss. Just as soon as I wrap the gift Mr. Gillespie just bought here for you. For me? Oh, 
Well, I do hope the dear, impetuous darling didn't go utterly off his conk and buy me something silly. Something I couldn't hawk. Uh, hardly, Miss Cavendish. Well, I just know I shouldn't even give you a teensy-weensy peek at this gift. If the floor walker caught me, I just know it might mean my carnation. But I just can't resist showing it to you. Weak-willed one, aren't I? All right, all right. Give with a gift. Oh, at once, miss. There. Yummy, isn't it? Oh, oh it knocks me out. A heart-shaped pin encrusted with diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. Pounds and pounds of them. Ten thousand dollars it cost, Miss Cavendish. And you'll just drool when you see the inscription on the back. To lambikins from her baby kid. Oh, the dear, dear boy. After him giving me an expensive gift like this, I'll have to get him something else besides just the cigarette case. Oh, but yes. Clark, where is your tie department? Third aisle to your left, Miss Cavendish. Oh, pardon me, there's a customer at the other end of the counter. Yes, miss? Something for you today? Oh, yeah. I'd like to buy a cigarette case for my boyfriend. I think I'll take one of those cigarette cases over there. Um, how much are they? Three hundred and twenty dollars. I'm just looking. Oh, Maisie. Maisie. Oh, Merton, what are you doing here? I've got wonderful news for you, Maisie. Gosh, ain't it exciting? I'll have to take your word for it, Merton. What happened? Well, I was home in our boarding house, I mean. I, I, I was taking a bath, and the phone rang. Naturally. And when I answered the phone, it was for you. Guess who it was. So I told the party you weren't home. Well, that was quick thinking, Mert. Who was it? None other than the famous glamour girl of pictures, Mona Cavendish. Well, well... Oh, live bait herself. Yeah, she, she said she was an old friend of yours and that you and her used to be on the stage together. Yeah, I remember her. She could throw a bump right from neutral without winding up. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Mona, uh, oh, I mean Miss Cavendish, said she wanted to see you and take you out to lunch today. Did she say who's paying? No, no, but since she invited you... and. At her suite at the Waldorf, well, I thought a rich movie star... Oh, take don't go you. by what's on the surface, Mert. Under those stripes, a zebra is still just a jackass, and I know Mona. All she's interested in is money. You know how she gets it? Well, is that important, Maisie? After all, that's her business. Yeah. From what I read about her business is real good. When she divorced her last three husbands, she collected plenty. Oh, gosh, she must have, huh? Lunch at the Waldorf don't cost peanuts. Yeah, but Mona's just inviting me up there to show how wrong I've always been about things. She wants to show off all she's got so I can compare it with what I haven't got. Oh, so you're not going, huh? Hmm. On the contrary, I am. Well, but I don't understand. If all she's going to do is glow well, at you... that's why I'm going, Mert. She wants me to drool over her diamonds and furs, and I just can't take that chance away from her. Oh. After all, Mona deserves a little pleasure out of life. She really has so little, you know. Come on, Mert. Drop me off at Eddie's bank. I want to tell him to include me out for lunch. Uh, okay, Macy. I, I don't get any of this. I, I guess I'll never understand women. Well, you're not supposed to, Mert. After all, you're only a man. Am I? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Come in. You you sent for me, Mr. Gillespie? Oh, Jordan, yes. Come in. Sit down. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. A uh, beautiful girl, that picture on your desk, sir. <laughs> your daughter? My fiance, Jordan. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Hey, Jordan, I have here a very valuable diamond pin that just arrived from the store. I want you to keep it. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr. Gillespie, but I really It's couldn't. for my fiance, Miss Cavendish. Oh. <laughs> After tonight, she'll be Mrs. Gillespie, you know. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Congratulations, sir. I, I'm sure Miss Cavendish will be happier with you than she was with all the others. Thank you, Jordan. Jordan, I want you to keep this little trinket in your desk so as I won't be tempted to give it to Mona, uh, Miss Cavendish, before the wedding. Uh, she's a very persuasive woman, you know. <laughs> obviously, Mr. Gillespie, obviously. Uh, but I'm somewhat persuasive myself, Jordan. After all, it took a bit of doing to win Miss Cavendish away from that chap she was engaged to back in Hollywood, Harold Lambert. Oh, yes, you mean the one that just lost all his money in Wall Street. Uh, <clears throat> it was purely a coincidence, Jordan, the fact that Miss Cavendish decided to shift her affections to me just after Lambert went broke. 
Oh, yes, sir. If you say so, sir. I think so, too, sir. I'll put Miss Cavendish's gift at my desk, sir, and then run out for a fast sandwich. A little behind my work, you know. I want to thank you for having the confidence to put it in my care. Oh, not at all, Jordan. Your honor's straightforward, trustworthy, and besides, it's insured. Well, uh, I looked all through the bank, Maisie, and I can't find Eddie. Say, maybe he's in the vault. Oh, they wouldn't put Eddie in the vault, Mert. He's a valuable man, I know, but he couldn't be that valuable. Well, you can't wait around for Eddie to show up. That that lunch date with Miss Cavendish is for one o'clock, you know. Yeah. Well, I'll just write Eddie a note not to wait for me for lunch. Let's see, he ought to keep his pencils in his desk drawer. Oh, but you, you shouldn't do that, Maisie. Look through Eddie's desk, I mean. After all, you're not married yet. Yeah, maybe you're right. Merton. Hmm? Do you see what I see? What? Yeah, a package, gift wrap. Oh. Say, do you think maybe that's the birthday present Eddie got for you, huh? Merton Fosgruber, if you're suggesting that I open this package to see what Eddie got me seven whole days before my birthday, I'm ashamed of you. Well, I didn't suggest anything, Maisie. But you're thinking that I should. Why, I'd bet if this present was for you, you'd pick it up and shake it like this. To see if you could guess what's in it. Gosh, it, it, it sure sounds expensive, huh? Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if it's jewelry. Merton Falsgruber, how can you be so utterly curious? Do you really think it is? Oh, who knows? Guess you'll just have to wait till your birthday to find out. Well, Merton, I'm ashamed of what you're suggesting. Huh? And he would certainly be angry if he found out that somebody had opened this package before it was supposed to be. Yeah, he would be. But he'd never find out if it were rewrapped carefully. No, he'd never find out. Mm. But it's not a nice thing to do. No, not a nice thing. No. But if I don't find out what's inside, I won't sleep nights. And I'll get circles under my eyes, and Eddie'd be very miserable because it'd be his fault. Yeah. Yeah. He'd start to worry and get sick and wouldn't be able to show up at the bank, and he'd be fired. Yeah. Merton, you just talked me into it. Talked you into what? Opening this package to save Eddie's whole future. Oh, gee, I, I sure am a convincing one, ain't I? Maisie, I hope you won't be sorry for taking this courageous move to save Eddie's job. Oh, I won't be, Mert. Unless it's something I can't use. Yeah. <gasps> wow. Oh. Get a load of that pin, Maisie. Gosh, yeah. Just what I just found out I wanted. Wowie. <gasps> a heart-shaped pin, lousy with diamonds and rubies and emeralds. Oh, gosh, it must have set Eddie back at least 12 bucks. Oh, easy. This here is real imitation, I'll bet. Sure, and hey, look, Maisie, th there's an inscription on the inside from Eddie to you. Oh, to lamekins from her baby kid. <laughs> Merton, isn't that a... Yeah, and it rhymes, too. Ah. Oh. Say, I'll bet none of Mona Cavendish's fellas ever wrote stuff like that there to her, huh? No. Somebody ought to show her what true love really is. Oh, no, Merton, now you're going too far. I am? Yeah, suggesting in your sly manner that I wear this pin when I have lunch with Mona so as I can show her something that I've got that she'll never have. I suggested you do that? Maisie, I'm a bad boy. You certainly are, Merton. Why, if I put this pin on before my birthday just to show off in front of Mona, and he'd be furious if he found out. Yeah, furious. But he wouldn't find out if I got this pin back in the box and all rewrapped before he knew it was missing. Yeah, he wouldn't find out. Merton, you talked me into doing it. Well, shame on me. Mm. When I call on Mona, I'm going to wear this pin. For her sake. For her sake? Yeah. The poor kid must find out some way what she's missing. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment.
back to Maisie. Hi, Mona. You remember me? Well, well, if it isn't Miss Hardway of 1945, Maisie Revere. Oh, come in, my dear. Lunch is about ready. Oh, well, thanks, dear. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Ah, uh, yes. You always had a healthy appetite, darling. But I'm sorry the Waldorf cuisine is fresh out of horse today. I'm having them send up some roast pheasant under glass instead. Under glass? My favorite dish, darling. Yours, too? Yours. Uh-huh. <laughs> but do let's sit down, Maisie. I'm... Utterly exhausted. All that traveling, you know. Oh, it must be quite fatiguing, my dear. All those round trips from Niagara Falls to Reno and back. Oh, you've read about my rich husbands, I gather. Oh, yes. And still gathering them, darling. Oh, but of course. <laughs> my latest fiancé happens to be a banker. Tonight he'll be my husband. Oh, how nice for you. Is he as handsome as that Harold Lambert you just gave the brush to? Oh, no. This one is much older. And he's more the artistic type. Writes a beautiful check. Oh, well, at that age, it's nice if they can do something. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, darling, I wish you could see something. I don't happen to have it here, but my fiancé bought me a gift this morning that will simply knock your eye out. Oh, well, how nice. I hate to do this to you, darling, but my fiancé also bought me a bit of a trinket, and I can show it to you because I'm wearing it under my coat. Would you care to see it? Do I have any choice? No, this is my turn at bat. Look. Uh, that pin was given to you by your fiancé? Yeah. Pretty little bauble, ain't it? I bet you've never seen anything like this before. That's what you think. Uh -huh. The big-hearted darling just won't save a penny of all that money he makes at the bank. In the bank? The Wall Street Trust? Well, you guessed it, darling. You must be pretty smart. Not as smart as I thought I was. You'll pardon me now, Maisie. I've got to see my lawyer about a little heart bomb suit. Well, I don't want to rub it in, Mona, but you should see the inscription he put on the back of the pin. It said... Uh, to Lamekins... From her baby, kittens. Yeah. Hey, how'd you guess it? A little bird whispered it in my ear. A cooked goose. You've got to believe me, Mr. Gillespie. I didn't know a thing about it. If there's anything I can do... You would committing Harry Carey on yourself be asking too much? Gosh, isn't that a little drastic? So what do you expect me to do, congratulate you? Not only did Mona storm into my office and break a golf club over my head, my best putter, but she's also suing me for heart bomb and wired Harold Lambert to fly here from the coast and marry her. She's marrying him instead of a banker like you? Yes, and after I'd already taken out a marriage license. Oh, I feel miserable. Yeah. Two dollars wasted. And at four percent interest, that would be... Oh, what's the use? Get out, Jordan. You're fired. Oh, just wait till I get hold of that blonde saboteur, Maisie. No, I don't understand why you did it, Lamekins. Can you tell me again, slowly? Well, don't you understand, Eddie? I didn't know that your boss, that, that he... Well, that she, that I, that you, well, that the pin, well, you can't blame me for that, can you? Can I what? Eddie, Maisie means that when she opened it and put it on, that it was intended from him to her instead of from you to her. Well, exactly. Thank you, Merton. You have such a clear way of explaining it. Uh, it's okay. Thanks. Th that's why you really can't hold it against her, Eddie. I could if I knew what to hold against her. Maisie... How can you do so many dumb things in one day? Well, it's easy when you use your head. Eddie, where are you going? To return this pin to Mr. Gillespie. Then I'm going to a psychiatrist. Well, you... You still love me, don't you, Eddie? Yeah. That's why I'm going to a psychiatrist. Well, Maisie, at, at least Eddie does understand. And he's still nuts about you. Yeah, he's nuts, all right. I don't deserve it. And that there Mr. Gillespie sure must be a louse. Firing Eddie for such a such a natural mistake. Yeah. Mert, hmm? I just got to get Gillespie and Mona back together. If any two people deserved each other, they do. Yeah, but how are you going to do it, Maisie? Mona is marrying that fella, Harold Lambert, tonight. But if I went to that wedding and sort of disillusioned Mona about him, 
Gillespie might get a chance to straighten things out with her. And give Eddie back his job. Uh-huh. With a raise, maybe. Yeah. Then you and Eddie could get married and live happily ever after. Oh, yeah. And we'll have kids, a home, a car. So you can see, Mert, we got to do it for Gillespie's sake. Yeah, for his sake. Exactly. Uh-huh. Now, I've never seen Eddie's boss. I mean, ex-boss, I mean. But but if Moan is what he wants, Moan is what he's going to get. Now, I'll just get into my stage makeup. i got just the right outfit to wear so as Mona won't suspect it's me. Then at the wedding tonight... We are gathered here tonight to witness the marriage of, um... Uh, Mona uh, Cavendish. Oh, thank you, yeah. Just can never understand my own handwriting in these marriage certificates. <laughs> uh, the marriage of Mona Cavendish to, uh... uh is Samuel Gillespie the third? No, darling, darling. You're the fourth for me, remember? Yeah, I don't care how many you've had, my dear. Now, I realize what a truly unusual woman you are for believing my story about that diamond pin and deciding to marry me instead of that, uh, that Lambert man. Oh, Sam, I just knew you were the only man in the world for me when you gave me that beautiful $10,000 pin. <laughs> yes. How did you know it was worth 10000 I had it appraised. Mm. Uh, continue with the ceremony, Judge. Mm, no. Um, and now, before I pronounce you two, man and gold digger, <coughs> I mean, uh, uh, man and wife, is there anybody present who can give just cause for this marriage and not be consummated? I do. She does? You, you, you do? Say, what is this? Yes, who are you? Don't you recognize me, darling? I'm the wife you deserted 15 years ago. In Pittsburgh. That's a lie. I was never in Pittsburgh. Yes, you were. It was so dark there, maybe you couldn't tell. Darling, is this true? Uh, No, I never even saw this woman. Don't give me that. It's never that dark in Pittsburgh. So, Mr. Gillespie, you've deserted a wife already. And now you want to marry another one. Oh, darling, you can't bring home another wife to live with us. We have such a small house. Uh, Mona, darling, this is some sort of a joke. Well, if it is, I don't appreciate your sense of humor. How could you even think of marrying me without even getting a divorce? Yes, and giving me enough money to support our Ethelbert. Yes. You have a child? This is ridiculous. If I had a child, would I name it Ethelbert? Besides being cheap, you were all so nasty. Well, all this is rather irregular. Are you certain somebody hasn't made a mistake? Yes. I have, almost. Wait, don't go, Mona. Look here, miss. Oh, please, darling, Mrs. Our son, remember? Uh Aha! That's where I've got you. Where is proof? Proof that I'm the father of this... this... Ethelbert. Well, so he wants proof, does he? He wants proof. I said he wants proof! Here I am, Daddy. You're... you're my son? Uh Uh-huh. Well, it could be. He looks like an Ethelbert. Hey, Mona, you've got to believe me. I've never been married, so this can't be my son. He is, and I can prove it. Yes, how? Son, tell him. I admit it. Well, that's enough proof for me. I'm calling this wedding off, Sam. Sam? But I thought you... Hey, didn't... Mona, darling, please marry me just this once. I wouldn't marry you now if you owned all the banks in the world instead of one measly one, Mr. Gillespie. Gillespie? Hey, what did you say? I said, no, you stay in here, son. Gillespie going. Oh, I'm the one that's going. The next time a man asks me to marry him, I'm going to make sure there isn't any other woman cutting in on my alimony. Goodbye. Well, so that's all she wanted, eh? No. Just your money, Mr. Gillespie. Oh, you're a lucky dog to find out in time. I'm sorry, Mr. Gillespie. I didn't think... That... Yeah, I'm the one who didn't think. Look, miss, I don't know what all this deserted wife thing was about, but I owe you a debt of gratitude. If there's anything I can do to repay you... Well, yes. Uh, you can give Eddie Jordan my fella. But we'll give him back his job. Oh, sure, sure. I'll even raise his salary two dollars a week. Oh, well, and one more thing, Mr. Gillespie. Um, I'd like you to talk to Eddie and ask him something I simply have to know. Well, certainly. What do you want me to ask him? Ask him, um, 
What's he really getting me for my birthday? In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Once again, here's Maisie. Well, so Mona married Lambert, and she's off for Niagara Falls again. As if the falls needed another drip like her. And Mr. Gillespie learned his lesson, too. He's one fellow that was all ready to embark on the sea of matrimony that was glad he missed the boat. <laughs> Funny thing, though. I can only be sorry for girls like Mona. True, she has mink coats and sable wraps, but, well, you can't take it with you. And where Moon is going, it'll be warm enough without him. Well, I gotta rush back to Eddie and tell him his job is waiting for him again. And I was really only kidding about being so curious about what Eddie's getting me for my birthday. But I sure hope it ain't a book to read. I already read a book. You have just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Pat McGeehan, Joan Banks, Sidney Miller, Hans Conried, and Frank Nelson. Jack McCoy speaking. (laughs) 